Hey, au revoir. <laughs> well, what can I say? Um, right, I don't know where to start. I know, it's exciting, isn't it? <laughs> I'm, I'm speechless. No, I can't be. No, no. No, he's no, definitely not right, speechless. Right, right, where do we start? Um, I'm going to go into some other things as the video goes on. And what we're going to do to give this a proper review is we're going to do a pint each. Obviously, we've only got the one uh, super glass. We've also glass. got this beauty. We've also got that, yeah. <laughs> Which, if you have it in Munich, that's what you get. That's what you get. You know, that's what you get. So, let's go a little bit further here. This is a very proud moment for ourselves because we kind of... We pushed for this. <laughs> yeah, we pushed for this like we pushed pushed you wouldn't know. Um, I'd like to thank uh, Dan and Joe, obviously, for making this happen because without them, this wouldn't have happened. Um, probably without me badgering him, it wouldn't have happened as well. <laughs> like, you know, it's the same scenario back with Mr. Barrett. And I'll also talk about Comrade as this goes on. Right. Anyway, um, it costs you £37.90. You're getting your 15%. Do your sums, it's about 280 a pint with your tokens and everything. And that is a good price. That's good, <laughs> yeah, that's good. Um, I'm not going to talk about the bottle in this review because we're going to do a separate one with yep. that because obviously without putting them together, you can't really do it, can you? Because it's just, off. Yeah. you know what I mean? Anyway, it's 5.2 ABV, as I'm sure you all know. Um, it's that's a kind of killer beer. It's, it's actually something that we kind of dreamed. And I always ask myself why they, they, they missed this one. Because it, before starting the review, it's a beauty. You know, that's not going to lie to anyone. I think most people that have tried it will say, well, yeah, I really did enjoy that beer. So this is a really exciting moment to have it Yeah, cake. it was, you know, um, when it was originally um, a work in progress, which is something I was going to go into later, but I'll mm. mention now, but it's to why... Mr. Rob's here. Um, it was going to be actually launched from here. There was talk of that. So I'm a little bit gutted that, <laughs> because, you know, to have um, like Dan and Joe here would have been a real special moment with this bar being named Franz Kiner in as well for a reason. Mm -hmm. So anyway, um, I couldn't get Dan and Joe because they kind of blew me out. You know, I'm hurt, people. I'm hurt. But I got this man instead. So there you go. <laughs> the one who landed the pop star's job. We have Mr. Robbie fucking Williams. So, right, I'll pour the pint because Rob don't drink, by the way. He um, knocked it on the head many years ago. So he won't, he won't. Too many issues, but. He won't be having a pint of Kelly. Yeah, Rob is in the building. I'll do the pint. Can I aim the camera around there? Oh, I'm robbing the perfect draft. He's guarding it from the wife, you see. Is that there? I think that's pretty much there. Yep, yeah, so. That's it. Right, I'll get the first one poured and we can take a look at it. Oh, look at that. I've got it set at four degrees. You can go in at four or five, no matter what. Oh, that is a proper German pint. Oh, 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 oh. Okay, almost. Right, so if you have that one, yeah, and I will pour into this one. The only trouble with these is you can't actually see if you're pouring a moulder, can you? No, you can't. So I'll probably get half a pint, no, my luck. And then because the machine's high, I can't see, can I? Yeah, I didn't think about this one, did I? Anyway, I might have a classic, but I can refill that as we go on. Oh, right. <laughs> right, blimey, I have to mess that up. Okay, okay, so yeah. Enough about Rob and enough about that, so. As you can see. Look at it. Oh, doesn't that look amazing? We have finally uh, got this on keg. I'm so, so pleased. And um, you can get these. <laughs> Halloween, eh? Is it? <laughs> Can't <tell you>. <laughs> <laughs> Chris done that one. <laughs> right. Uh, maybe that one's rare. We can start trading these on eBay. <laughs> just Right. So, yeah, it's Halloween tomorrow, as we know. So, wow, look at this. This looks absolutely wonderful. It's got that lovely amber colour. Unfiltered, yeah. so, yeah, it's got that haziness to it. Yeah. One thing, we were... We were Pasteurisation. Let's get on to that, because yeah. a couple of people have spoke to me about that. Um, and I do believe they're correct. 
the cakes have to be pasteurised, whereas this usually is an unpasteurised, unfiltered beer. Is that going to make a difference? We will see when we try it. Yeah, um, I mean, I, I just messaged Joff, who uh, made us aware of that, and I, I said to Joff someone, you could do with here now, couldn't you? Oh, uh, he's, he's very, it very knowledgeable. Like, yeah. I always say to him, I want to try and get him on a live and pick his brains yeah. and everything. Because when you're talking about beer, I think he knows more than most of us put together. Definitely. If I'm honest, and his knowledge, I'd love to go into a review having his take on something because you miss things and he picks up on things that you would never get, you know. And you sort of think back afterwards and you think, yeah, he's been right about that. Yeah. So, Not all the time, but most of the time. I am going to, oh, the smell, yeah. Yeah, that smells lovely. You've got that lovely malty smell there. Mmm. Okay. There you go. Right, I'll go in on this. Blimey, I think I've only got half. Oh. That's got some flavour. That has got some really lovely flavour in there. I haven't just made up that we've got this on cake. It's it's wonderful to be able to pour it out of the machine. So, yes, you are going with a really mild carbonation here because that is what this beer is all about. It isn't big, it isn't gassy, it's smooth, it's velvet-like. Um, all those qualities have transferred well to the cake. Get a nice sweet maltiness on the beginning, a bit of toasted bread. I'm picking up on a little bit more... Spices, yeah, spices. I was saying that. I was thinking that. And that, I think, is coming across a little bit more in the keg than what it does in the bottle. Can't be a hundred percent sure. Yeah, no, that's why I said well. But I do think that that is the case. You are getting that bitterness on the end. It's subtle. I think you're getting it a little bit more in the keg than what you are in the bottle. You said hoppiness. Do you think? I'm not so sure. Um, I'm trying to get it up. Trying to get the thing up. What uh, what um, Dan said about it. Um, I I thought it was slightly more hoppy. There, there's a there's a more kind of bitterness, not in a in a bad way necessarily, but as I said, without talking about that kind of pills in the bite, that kind of bitterness, not a nasty bitterness. No, yeah, no. That's what I mean. I don't. It's a traditional, yeah, full bodied. Which see, I'd say more medium body, but that's just my personal opinion. Yeah, it I would says, go on it. It says this. Michelle translated, I translated this, all of this to see what it German. actually was saying. Um, and they actually say they full call body. it full body. For me, it's a medium body beer. Um, but that yeah, see, flavors saying, in there. Oh, hold on, mm. hold on. Whoa, 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 whoa. This is why I want to read it. Franz Kana Keller beer is a traditional German beer known for its rich and full-bodied flavour. Being a Keller beer, it's a style of beer that's typically unfiltered and unpasteurised. Yeah. So maybe, maybe this... Maybe it is, isn't it? <laughs> this, this is something that I'm, I'm going to have to... You need an expert like Joff. You're going to have to ask someone like Dan because it's yeah. basically how their company's done it and how they work with... Resulting in a cloudy beers. appearance, which it is, it is cloudy, yeah. and a more robust taste. A combination of barley malt, wheat malt, as we know, because it, it does border on to your, to your visons without your banana is. Yeah, you're your, not getting the without your clove. In there. Without you your are clove. getting that kind of smoothness. To um, as of Orkney sweetness with notes of bread and caramel, which, yep, you could go along with that. And the hop bitterness that adds complexity to the taste. Yeah. So there you go. Now I say a lot when they get it wrong on there. I think um, Dan, whoever's done this, has took his time on this one because I, it is yeah. more hoppy if you're going along the lines of the bottle. Um, brewed by yeah, Long History, which we know. Now this beer has a medium body, so now they're <laughs> contradicting <laughs> they're going themselves. themselves yeah. uh, smooth mouthful, uh, making it highly drinkable and refreshing. A rich brewing traditions, if you're a fan. Oh, that's a thank you. Yeah, yeah. You see, as I say, we said it was medium bodied. Obviously, before I'd even read this, when we reviewed the um, uh, bottle, but it, it's it's got some depth to it, hasn't there, it? There are a lot, a lot of flavour in there. They... It's smooth. Oh, it's all, clean. All the way through. But what it's I, hoppy. What I love about this particular beer is it's so refreshing. You do get that... Um, you do get that slight spice to it, you do get that slight bitterness on there, but the feeling that you're left with in your mouth, the aftertaste, 
is really, really refreshed, clean. You get a nice malty taste left in your mouth. There's nothing that's kind of too much or you're just left with a really refreshed yeah, it's, taste. It's kind of, it's, it's an easy going drink. Yeah, you that's know. what I love about and it. And a 5.2, over the course of the day, you know, obviously loads of us are going to be on it today, it's going to pack a punch because 5.2s, you know, you're getting it, up to it's your... It's just about right for having a really good sit down and a little bit of a session. It's not too heavy, it's not too light. This for me, oh, it's, it's one of my absolute favourites and yeah. Um, yeah, again, you get back to the bottle and obviously the question that we've been asked a lot, as I said, we'll do a separate video yeah. with the bottle because without putting them together, it yeah. is hard to tell. When, once you get things side by side, that's when you're getting a really good indication of what tastes best. But yeah, this, this is a belter. You has, know. It has transferred well to keg. There is no doubt about it. All those flavours are there. And it is really, it, it's got the same feeling in your mouth, that velvety smoothness. The same flavours are there. You're still getting all that complexity of flavour. Balanced out nicely. Yes, I feel maybe a little bit more spicy, a little bit more yeah, it's, hoppy, but it isn't too much. It's still really well balanced out. It's, 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 a, it's a cracker. It's, it's fans of kind of. I mean, do they make a bad beer? Come on. You know, um, I say, actually, yeah, getting on to things. Right. So we're going to go one step further. My relationship with Perfect Draft, which <laughs> often spoke about uh, PJT's up Dan's arse and all this crap, you know. Right. I... Badgered them for that beer, yeah. Um, and he gets this parental treatment, right? I did not get any parental treatment. Um, I've had this conversation; it's been ongoing with many people trying to dig me out in beer groups, and the reviews are stitched up, and I refuse to watch it. Well, actually, I'll be honest; it makes no effing odds to me whether you watch me or not. But I like to get my point. Now, the first point is right. I had something set up with Comrade. Now, that was due to um, me bringing. Comrade, uh, me and Comrade bring in France Kind of Royal back. As a thank you to me, Comrade put me on a list. This is Comrade, nothing to do with the current people or anything. Obviously, Comrade went off, and there were some kegs that were sent to me by Comrade, which was. Yeah, was a thank you for. Yeah. A, um, um, the only thing I had to do was it all set up put a YouTube review in Perfect Draft Keg Tips. And that was. That was Basically, it. I was never at one stage asked to like your score this eight or your but, score yeah, this nine. Give it, an honest review. Yeah, was an honest results. review. And I said, "Don't worry, comrade. I'll make sure I love it." And he said, "You don't have to no. do that." And that's comrade. Yeah. And um, the one with the Bud Light that everyone keeps pulling me up on, I brought into that. I yep. really enjoyed it. The first cake that I had sat there in the afternoon. And that's the one. Lovely that keeps... hot day. I enjoyed it. Yeah, it did. I stick to what I said on that particular video. I did. That, that particular there wasn't only me on YouTube, though, that enjoyed that keg. And what annoys me is that, like, um, they are always pulling out me when other people enjoyed it as well, mentioning no names. I didn't. Oh, yeah. That, that go at you. <laughs> that's got me. But as I say, um, I do have a good relationship with Dan. As I say, as I said earlier, I was upset that they didn't come here and everything. You know, I've got Rob instead. But, you know, that's one of them things. But for bringing this, it just shows when people people say, oh, they don't listen. They do listen. All right, you have to go on and on and on. One day, maybe you'll block me. <laughs> yeah, I'm surprised he hasn't already. I think you the know. special relationship is the fact that he, he actually reads and reads all the messages you send him because you do bad for him, don't you? <laughs> you know, um, and everyone said that I knew this was coming for a long time. I didn't. Actually, I, I we did speak about it when we met up with Dan. Yeah, we've had I numerous s conversations about it. Just putting it to them, it's a really great beer. Why didn't we do it? this on gig? You know, it it's a of, really great beer. It was one that was missing, and I never at first when Dan was like, Yeah, 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 okay, mate, okay, I'll have a word with Joe and so on, and just like, Yeah, it's not me, but and then it, there was a few things that were said, there was a couple of hints. Because I said to you, oh, I think it's happening, I think it's happening, and that, but yeah, you never know till you know. And them delivering this beer, is, it's just a, it's a dream come true, you know. It's like, I say, I, I, I wouldn't, with these reviews, I wouldn't con you out of your money. And that's what annoys me. When people that watch my videos, a lot of people I know personally, and they'll say, oh, I've got that because you said that, Paul. And if you, I know, like, the cost of living and everything now, and if anyone was stupid enough to think that I'd actually say something was good when I thought it wasn't good, then they obviously don't know me. I think the main thing that I set out to do when I do a review is to give people um, 
maybe a little bit of background about the beer. Tell oh, them yeah. what flavours I'm picking up from the beer so they can see if that's suitable for their palate. Because not everyone likes the same thing. No. If something's really hoppy, I'm going to tell you it's really hoppy. If it's got a load of fruit flavours, that is what I'm going to tell you. I'm never ever going to say, oh, that will be great for someone. Unless I know that that's a particular style of beer that you like drinking. Yeah. When, um, when you get to know people, you can kind of say like, you know, this would work for you. This wouldn't work for you. Yeah. This... I've, I'd be amazed if anyone did not like it. Um, it's been popular enough with us all in the bottles due to Redneck's Balm. Um, obviously, yeah. Marcus. Thank great you, lad. Marcus. Um, <laughs> You've been brilliant. Because we can, yeah, we lovely. can, we can get this obviously for ages. With and this is the other point. Come on, guys. You was asking, oh, supermarket beers all the time. We can get that in the supermarket. You cannot get this in the mm. supermarket. <laughs> no, this is I mean. a non-supermarket beer. This is great stuff. Yeah, you know, I mean, <clears throat> getting Brewed back to German. Yeah, Beauty. getting back to Dan. This is his new favourite keg. Now, after his thing with Brewdog, I'm not listening to a word he says. But you know, this is going to be popular. There's no doubt. I like I mean, my beers. I, I I like a whole range of beers. I, I'm a mood drinker. I'll drink IPAs. I I have a good go of stouts. I'll. Uh, I'll try everything and I enjoy a lot of it. But I tell you, this is my go-to beer because it's so light, refreshing. It's not too weak, it's not too strong. It leaves you with a pleasant aftertaste. It, it's it a is. really the great The more you're drinking, beer. the more, because at first, now I'll be honest, because I'm an honest person, despite what a lot of you think, I was pissing around with it earlier and I was texting Michelle. <laughs> was inside. I was like, where come here, where are you? I was like, I think this might be hoppy, hoppy. I'm like panicking because Obviously, I'm, I've been so excited for this. I when think, you... yeah, I think that's what the problem is. Because you get so excited, because the expectation is so high, you're thinking, what if I try and I don't like it? What if it well, hasn't I, I, transferred I was, well I really, to yeah. you? You do think I really these things. going back to the bottle and thinking, but it's more hoppy, it's more... And I'll, you know when you confuse yourself and you're trying to convince mm. yourself this and that, and then everything starts going around in your head and I'd like to, to sample a bit more. There's no hurry to do this with you. It's just like, because I don't want to do it one off, hence why we've got one drink each. But we kind of knew through messing around with it. Yeah, that has got that's got all the flavours that are in the bottle. How they can stand up to each other, I won't know to do that. Yeah. But I'm it's, enjoying this. Yeah. I'm it's, glad it's on keg. It's <laughs> a cracker. And I mean, like I say, I don't know why it took so long to get it out, because it's like they missed something there. Like, and my exact words to Dan is, yeah, but why pay Brewdog when you've got something so much better here? And, and it's, so, it's your own company's beer. It's Why wonderful not? that they've got it on. And this, you know, I mean, let's be honest. We, we talk about um, Perfect Draft and a lot of you. I always want to, like, go on the negative side of them and everything. they got some balls, if you think about it, compared to the others. You know, I won't name them. <laughs> they, they, they've, we've had more kegs in, is it a month than they've had in a year? God, look how um, one, two, three that I can think of just four. Four. In the last one, like, I mean, boom, come on, boom, boom, boom. this new keg, yeah. new keg, new keg. It's just like wow. it's some journey, isn't it? <laughs> and yeah, it's costing us all a bloody fortune, as I said. You know, I mean, I have to remember having to show my receipt for my keg, which I thought was bang out of order, but I did it because it proved a point. And like, I paid for mine just like you. I got my fifteen percent and my five percent. I only brought six. I'm not going to endorse anything. I'm, I'm. I'm not going to say something is good if I don't think it's good. Basically, what I'm saying no, they trust you. is <laughs> it's me, exactly the flavours that I'm picking up in that beer, what kind of style of beer it is, and then it's up to you to make that choice whether that's for you or it's not for you. I'd be amazed if anyone don't like this. I mean, obviously... If you like Stella Unfiltered, you're going to like this. Different level. It's the same style, that's style of beer. It's an unfiltered beer, but this is so much better. There's and so much more flavour in it. You did, um, I mean, you did mention if you don't know what a Keller beer is or the background to a Keller beer, obviously we've gone on for ages already, yeah. but if you check back <laughs> to the last one of the bottle of this where I've actually put the keg on I it, did, I did quite Michelle's a lot of research, gone quite, quite into depth out. about it because obviously a lot of you the are background, unsure. The history. But I, 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 I see this, and I'm going to stick my head out here again now because I always do, but I see this, it, it borders on an owl for me. It, it's got the that complexity that the smoothness, it's yeah. the lack of carbonisation. Um, right, it, yeah, it's, rather it's than not towards a standard lager. Like, mm. it's nothing like a, a Pilsner, which I'd said 
prior to that because you know when you're trying to think no did you give you were saying that long you no no but it doesn't <laughs> border like yeah i know that other people said it borders towards the hills it's nothing like either of them is you it? are getting a nice sweet maltiness at the beginning of this but you year. don't get it at the end do you, you get that the aftertaste is quite malty the taste that you're left with in your mouth is quite malty but it's not like a um a helis, but it's malty all the way through it's not that it isn't right. as sweet as that. You've got a more balanced taste because you do have a little bit of spice in the middle. You do have um, a little and bit it of flows. a bitter bite at the end. Not a lot. It's subtle. It flows. But, it's there. but um, <laughs> I do apologise about Rob. He's very quiet here for some reason. But we've got to get here. Who's the bit that's going to haunt me? I don't, I don't uh, <laughs> 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 no, no. How long did I go with this? This is my favourite beer. I feel it's translated well to keg. I think the keg is pasteurised. I don't know. I'm going to have to ask someone in the know to actually know, no. But I'm still giving it a 10. How it will compare up against the bottle to... I and that I one, am going on the world famous 9. Um, it's still a 10. It's, it's great. It's not as good as Royal. It's not as good as Standard France, kind of. But that's because I'm more into wheat beers. Yeah. If I was picking that along the lot of the of the fans kind of range, it beats the Dunkel hands down. But I, I do like, the Dunkel, like that. I so do. anyway, next for perfect draft key. Are we gonna go on that? <laughs> yeah. Are we gonna go Come on, on that? Guys. Give us the full range. <laughs> you know, um you know, why not? Isn't it? it would be Are popular. It? I I've got a feeling. Four point eight percent, it's a light enough summer beer. Next summer. Come on, everyone. Let's push come on, for this. Perfect job, team. <laughs> yeah, Dan, if you're watching, come on, this fella. This one next. That would be great. This one next. Why well, pay Snyder's? You can, you know. But then Snyder's is kind of. <laughs> it's kind of. It's Snyder's better. I'm not going to go into that one on this. Uh, not on this review. <laughs> let's just be honest. That one we'll say we'll keep for another day. But yeah. Indeed. That's a, a definite possibility. Anyway. Say. Cheers. Cheers, people. Everyone will put um, Cheers to all you guys I'm, that are watching this. Yep. Yeah. This is great stuff. Mm -hmm. I'm um, up in Liverpool tomorrow, as a lot of you know. There's a video where I'm giving away some beers. I don't think no one's probably even watching this now, barring me. <laughs> right. I think we'd better call it a day. I think it's the, actually the longest review we've ever done. of a single beer we've ever done. <laughs> what can I say? It's here. If you got to the end, thank you for watching. Well, I have, haven't I? <laughs> See? Right. Bonjour. <laughs>